What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker. This is Building an NFT Bookstore Part 8. I've decided that I want to pivot a little bit and I want to move on to working on the front end a little bit on this uh, app. And in order for us to do that, what I want to try to do is make this smart contract upgradable going forward so that we can actually deploy part of it or we can deploy the whole system now, but then when we want to add more features, uh, we can do that without needing to modify too much. I can't promise that we're going to get that exactly right. We may have to redeploy everything later, but at least I want to take a stab at it. Um, so in order for us to do that, let me open up the tests again. So as you can see, right now when we deploy, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when we deploy a new storefront, we pass that storefront into the bookstore. And then um, I think later on when we actually use the storefront, we set the bookstore. So essentially what I want to do is I want to make this so that we actually set this in two directions and make sure that it's only owner. And so what I mean by that is I want to essentially deploy the storefront, deploy the bookstore, and then set the storefront on the bookstore and then set the bookstore on the storefront, if that makes sense. And what that's going to allow us to do is later on down the line, um, we can have our bookstore, which has sort of the record of all of the data. And then we can deploy a new storefront, which actually has more functionality. Um, so if you look at our storefront right now, it's not really storing any data anywhere. All it's doing is sort of uh, calling methods on the actual bookstore. And in that sense, it's sort of a proxy. Um, and basically what I want to do is just kind of extend this a little bit so that we can swap in new storefronts, which can call functions on the actual bookstore. Um, and I think this should be pretty straightforward to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of uh, start working. I'm probably going to start on the tests and start changing the tests up a little bit so that we actually call the, the methods differently. Um, and then we'll fix the contract. So it should be pretty straightforward and hopefully this isn't too long of an episode. And just to kind of clarify that one more time, the idea is that we would deploy the bookstore um, and hopefully it's sort of finished because the, the thing is the bookstore maintains state. So once we go live with the bookstore on like a main net, it's there. Like we wouldn't necessarily want to try to redeploy another one. Um, but it is nice if we can actually upgrade some of the functions and the way things are implemented over time. And so having a different contract, which we can swap, like this one, um, is useful. So anyway, that's what we're going to try to do. Okay, so to start, the first thing I'm going to do is just swing over to my tests, and I'm going to go ahead and update this. Uh, I'm going to copy... Uh, let's, let's do this one. Let's copy this. So what I want to do basically is inside of uh, my bookstore, I want to say bookstore.set storefront, and then we'll say storefront.address. And doing this is going to break all of our tests. But I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm just going to replace this everywhere because we're changing the number of arguments that go into the uh, bookstore contract. So we're going to have to go just swap that out and we're going to have to create this method. Um, Let's go ahead and just do this everywhere, see if I miss any. Okay, we have quite a bit of tests in here. Uh, well, not that many, okay. Let's see if we miss any. So if we run the test over here, uh, everything should be screaming at us now, telling us that you we have the wrong number of arguments or something like that. Um, so we hopefully we get like zero passing or it doesn't even compile or something. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do, first of all, is come to our storefront. Um, and all I want to do is, well, two things. Um, let's, let, we can do this really kind of in a quick fix. First of all, I feel like I should be awaiting 
all of this stuff. That feels like an error. Um, let me go ahead and do that. Await and await. And I'm gonna pause the video really quick, but I need to replace all of those locations uh, where I just copied that. So um, I'm gonna pause it so you don't have to watch me do the boring thing, but be sure to go add await before all of those calls. Cool, so now we're waiting on everything. Um, so we should be good to go. Um, let's go back over to our storefront now because, or our bookstore rather, um, because now we're calling set storefront here instead of passing it in. So all I need to do really um, to get this fixed is come here and say function uh, set storefront. And then what I can do actually is essentially just cut this stuff from the uh, from the constructor here, and um, we'll basically be done. So I don't need to cut the current book version. That would be a bad idea. Um, I just want to paste this here, and let's run the test and see if it works. Now this obviously is flawed. And we're gonna have to fix this in just a second because we don't want to let anybody <laughs> set the storefront. Um, but let's make sure our tests are all green. Okay, cool. So yeah, the next thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that only the owner can set the storefront. So essentially all I'm gonna do for that is create a assertion. And we're need, let me, I need to check that there's nothing else in here um, that we need to do this for um, set bookstore also needs to be only owner. Okay, so let's do this. Um, what I want to do is inside of our security here, um, let's just copy this. Um, and we'll say uh, it won't allow anyone but the contract owner to set the storefront okay and what I'm gonna do is basically expect this call to revert so I'm just gonna say wait bookstore set storefront and um, let's see here what I want to do is say So when we deploy this, it's coming from accounts zero. So what I'm gonna do is say from accounts like seven, it doesn't really matter which one. And we're gonna expect that that's gonna revert with uh, the following message. I'm just making sure I have my parentheses lined up here. So I wanna say, um, let's see, so one thing I've picked up on um, is if you look at Open Zeppelin and how their errors come back, the error messages follow a particular format. It always tells you which contract it came from, which is smart because when you get these reverts, you don't necessarily know where it originated. So it's nice to say which contract it actually came from. Um, so I believe this is going to be from the bookstore. So we'll say bookstore and then say only contract owner can set storefront something like that okay so we'll expect that and we'll be done with that test and I need a parenthesis to close that up and we'll go ahead and run this and it should actually fail and tell us that it did not revert and I apologize if I'm dragging a little bit in this video. I am a little bit tired today, but we're gonna get through it. And um, okay, cool. So assertion error did not fail. I am working on a cup of coffee though. So if you follow along with the next video, hopefully it's a little more alive. <laughs> anyway, okay, cool. So where are we bookstore? So what we need to do is a few things. Um, the first thing is we don't have a contract owner stored anywhere, which is an important point. So to do that, all we need to do is come up here and say address private and we'll say owner. And then in here, what we'll do is just set the owner to be the message sender. So essentially that's whoever created this contract becomes the owner. 
So that means it's, I mean, it, it would be important no matter what, but it's important to remember which address and have the, you know, access to the account that you deploy contracts with if you're going to update them later. Um, I don't know in what situation you would lose the account, but if for some reason you do, there's no way to update um, any of these contracts in the future um, because you, you don't have access to that account anymore. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is just inside of set storefront, we need to say require message.sender equals the owner. And I'm gonna give that a message. I'm gonna give that this message as a second argument. Um, so it's gonna fail if it's not the uh, contract owner and it's gonna give it that particular message and hopefully this should get us green and if it is then the next thing that we're going to do is essentially copy this same idea over to the bookstore because we have a set or sorry the storefront because we have a set um, bookstore feature over there okay so let's just copy that test so we're green now that's great um, where are my tests uh, okay there we go so I'm going to copy this same, copy this same uh, test again. Say it won't let anyone but the contract owner to set the bookstore. Okay, and I need to probably flip the order of these because otherwise, uh, no, it won't matter. Um, let's do this. So let's copy this set books all i need to do is actually change this to say storefront and then say set bookstore and because i'm not really testing this other one it doesn't even matter i don't i don't need to do both necessarily um so storefront set bookstore um and then i need to say a uh, bookstore address Okay, and from account seven, and now this error is gonna come from storefront and say only contract owner can set bookstore, like that. So if we run this, now we should have eight tests with one of them failing. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my storefront because we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. I'm going to get rid of this to do because we're about to do it. Um, so I'm just going to say address private owner like that. And then when we run the constructor on this, which we don't have one right now, constructor doesn't take any arguments. We'll just say owner equals message dot sender like that. And now the only thing we need to do is in set bookstore, we'll just require message.sender equals owner. And we will, actually, let me check something really quick. I just want to make sure I didn't do a typo over here. No, okay. My test, I guess, would have failed if I had made a typo. Okay, so we're requiring that the message sender is owner, and I want to copy this message exactly and paste that in as the second argument and now we should have this set up to be fairly secure uh, I need to review this a little bit I kind of don't look at it too much if I'm not actually recording I try to do everything as live as I can but I need to like study on it a little bit later uh, just to kind of do a audit because um, security on these things can be deceiving um, so anyway, um, we'll, I'll do that later and we'll maybe, maybe later on in the series. I don't know if I'm going to worry about it just yet. Okay, so the goal of this was to be able to deploy a new storefront later. And now we've kind of achieved that. Uh, just glancing over at the bookstore. You know, one thing we can do, so I was just noticing like we have this purchase from author and we called it that because originally uh, this was gonna be the actual purchase. Um, 
What's really happening though is this transfer from the author. So I'm gonna see if I can just rename this transfer from author and let's see. I don't know if we call that anywhere in the actual test. Hopefully not. Um, but we should be, this is gonna make our code a little more clear. Bookstore transfer from author. Let's run our test and see if that works. So one thing I'm kind of thinking about, we haven't added this marketplace concept at all. And this, I haven't quite figured out, um, uh, purchase from author is not a function. Okay, that's coming from our security, so we're probably testing that we can't call that. Um, we should rename that here. Transfer. And we'll do the same down here and just rerun that, but that's uh, not a big deal. Okay. Okay, so let me run the test again, but I'm gonna keep talking about what I was gonna talk about. So in our bookstore, we have this transfer from author now. We have talked about the fact that we want to allow people to sell, um, sell their own books later in a market. And I don't exactly know how that's gonna be implemented yet. Um, what we may need to do, I mean, I guess like, you know, we have this tr safe transfer that's built into the ERC 1155. So we may have to uh, give allowances um, to some other contract. We may need to deploy another contract called like book market or something like that. Um, which will maybe have the storefront as a front end also. And then we could have like purchase from market written in here and redeploy this. Um, and then that market maybe has the ability to talk to the bookstore directly also. I don't know, I have to kind of work this out um, and I'm not sure, I'm trying to decide. I may, I may change my mind about jumping into the front end um, so quickly. Again, I'm kind of working this out on the fly. So um, to do create set storefront method that's only owner, we did that. Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here and kind of map this out on paper a little bit and then decide we may have, I was going to jump into deploying this to the test net in the next episode and then setting up a React app to talk to it. Um, but I may actually continue with going um, through the, the development of this a little bit more. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna think about it. We don't need to sit here and um, just kind of wander around on this video too much. Just wanna kind of give you an idea of what I'm thinking about. The point of these series is actually to kind of like, we're developing this together. So, all right, I'll, uh, I'll do some stuff off camera and we'll jump back in in a little bit with the next episode once I figure out what it's going to be. So if you made it this far, I appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next episode.